All right, how's it going, y'all? Today we're back in TrueNAS Core 12, and this time we're gonna be going over how to set up TrueNAS Core 12 as a backup destination for Apple Time Machine. This means you'll be able to easily back up all the Macs on your network to your TrueNAS Core system, and that way you'll be able to have a great snapshots of all the files, all while sending data over to TrueNAS in case anything happens to them. And this means you'll even be able to go back in time to any version of a file that you've got and be able to restore it just like that. And so that means if you make a bad edit to a Word document and you really wish you had the previous version, you can just go into Time Machine and grab that previous version out and merge in the changes yourself. It's really powerful, though it is a little bit complicated to set up on TrueNAS because you need to make sure you have all the right SMB configurations. We're gonna go ahead and create a new user for every single Mac that you've got. That way it's all separated and they all have their own shared folder. This way every Time Machine will have its own folder and if anything happens to one Mac, it can't go to any of the other Macs, which is really important. And so the first thing we're gonna go ahead and do is go into Accounts and create that new group. That way we can have all of our Time Machines have the exact same group and it'll just be easier. So we're just gonna go ahead and click Add and we'll say this new name is Time Machine. And we'll just go ahead and click Submit. And so this way we'll just put every single one of these in the Time Machine group, it'll just be easier. And now we're gonna go into Users and create a new user for every single Time Machine Mac you'd like backed up. So I'm just gonna do one. We'll just call it Mac1. And we'll go ahead and just give it a password. And for primary group, we're gonna go ahead and say Time Machine. And so the rest of these permissions are great. So we're just gonna go ahead and click Submit. And so right here we can see Mac1 is a new user that we can use. And so now we need to go ahead and set up a new Time Machine data set on our pool. So go into Storage, Pools, and we're just gonna go ahead and click on your main pool that you wanna add these to and click Add Data Set. We're gonna call it Time Machine. And this is just so we can put everything under the same Time Machine and all these settings are good. And so we're just gonna go ahead and click Submit. And so now from within there, we're going to create another sub data set, but this one's actually going to be for every single Mac. So if we had 10 Macs, we'd create 10 sub data sets. So we're gonna go ahead and click Add Data Set to it. And this one's going to be an SMB data set. So this one we're gonna call Mac1 to match the username of the Mac1. If you wanna have it Laura's Mac or whatever, you could do that as well. And then we're just gonna have these all inherit, so if we need to update anything, we can just do it from one place. And then the share type we want to make sure is SMB. And so we're gonna go ahead and click Submit. Also for encryption, there's no reason to encrypt this because encrypting through macOS is going to be a lot better and cause a lot less issues. If you encrypted here too, you'd be double encrypting everything. All right, and so now, go ahead and do that for all the different Macs you wanna back up. And so you can see it right here that we've got it. So the next thing is to go ahead and make sure we've activated SMB. So go into services, go down to SMB, make sure this toggled on, and we're gonna go ahead and click configure. Under advanced options, you wanna make sure you've got the Apple SMB two and three protocol extensions enabled. And this you probably already have if you're already using Mac with FreeNAS. And so now we need to go ahead and go into our sharing, into SMB to actually configure it as a shared folder. And so once again, you're gonna do this for every single Mac you wanna back up. You wanna turn all those data sets we created into shared folders, just like this. So we're gonna go ahead and click add and go to it and select it. Then you do want to go ahead and enable advanced options. And so we're gonna go ahead and say, instead of default share permissions, we're gonna say no presets. So we can set up ourselves and we're going to do a couple of things here. We're gonna say time machine, Apple style encoding. And so now what's really important is we need to add in a couple of auxiliary parameters, which are VFS objects. So I'm just gonna go ahead and paste those in there here. So it's VFS objects equals fruit and streams XATTR. And so that way, Apple Time Machine will play a lot better with SMB. I believe Time Machine is supposed to add this in there, but this is just a redundant way to make sure it gets loaded in there. And now just go ahead and click Submit. All right, and now we're gonna go ahead and restart SMB. All right, perfect. 
Now we do want to go back and do one thing before we go ahead and finish, and we're going to go back into that shared folder. We're going to go into storage, pools, time machine, and select on it. And we're going to go into options and set up a quota. So under advanced options, we want to make sure that we've got a quota because time machine will grow to the size of whatever shared folder you've got. So here we'll just do two terabytes. And so that way, Time Machine does not just grow and become the entire size of your pool. And now we need to go ahead and give the ACL or the access control list to Mac one to this folder. So go ahead and select it again. And this time we're going to go ahead and click edit permissions. And now we're going to go ahead and select the user and we're going to say Mac one and click apply user. Then ACL preset, we're gonna go ahead and say restricted. And we're gonna go ahead and make sure that the owner has full access. And now we're gonna go ahead and click apply. And so now that Mac user should have access to this folder. And so now just go into finder and hit command K. And you've probably already connected the server before. And so it's probably saved your username and password. To get around that, do a username at the IP address, or in this case, my DNS record. That way it will say, okay, I wanna change users. Click connect. And go ahead and type in that password. And go ahead and connect to the Mac. And just like that, you can go ahead and create a new shared folder, make sure it worked, boom, perfect. And so now we can just go ahead and set this up as a time machine destination. So go into time machine preferences, you might have to go into Time Machine Preferences via System Settings, so I'll show that real quick. So just go into Time Machine, select Disk, and we're going to choose it right here. And then you can encrypt backups or not encrypt your backups, depending on what you'd like. I'd recommend encrypting them, but for this video, I'm not going to. And so now, log in with that username and password again. And so as you can see, there's two terabytes available because we set up that quota. And so that's really important because Time Machine will keep growing to whatever size shared folder you've got. And so now we'll speed it along and click backup now. And so once you see this has successfully been written, that means you're good. It's now just going to automatically backup on your network. And even better, you don't have to have that Mac shared folder always connected. You can disconnect it and Time Machine in the background now will connect to it and will not mess you up. You won't even see it. It'll just do this all in the background and every hour will automatically back itself up to your TrueNAS system. It's a great way to do this because you don't have to have a hard drive always plugged into your computer and you have the power of ZFS behind it, making sure that all your data stays secure and you don't end up with a bit flip that ruins your entire Mac data set. And so as you can see right here, it's sending over the data. And so that means everything's worked. Just continue those processes where you keep creating more shared folders and more users for every single different Mac you'd like backed up on your network. And that's all there is to it. Now all your Macs are automatically going to be backing themselves up to your free NAS system. And so it's just going to be incredibly easy to go ahead and use. All right, well, that's going to be it for this tutorial. Go ahead and leave any of the tutorials you'd like to see me make in the comments below. Subscribe if you haven't already. And if you'd like to sponsor the channel and get early access to all my videos, there's a link for that in the description. All right, have a good one. Bye.